Star Wars Celebration Chicago. How you doing? We got one more better in us better than that. Come on, Celebration. How you doing? Are you excited for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order? I mean, come on. Well, we don't know a lot about this game yet, but that all changes right here at Celebration today. We've got the team from Respawn Entertainment here. The very, very talented developers of Jedi Fallen Order. And we also have some special guests. We'll get there as well this hour. And we're all here, they're all here to spill the very first details about a game that I think I can safely say that everyone in this room is most excited about this year. A Star Wars Jedi game, a Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, I just can't wait to find out more about this game. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's bring out the team from Respawn Entertainment out here to the stage. How are you? Yeah, good. Hey, Stig. Great to see you, David. Great to see you guys. Yeah. Wow. Hi, everyone. This Welcome to cool. Star Wars Celebration. Thanks. <laughs> and hello to the many, many fans that are watching at home as well. I know you're excited. Why don't we go ahead and start with a round of introductions so everyone can get to know you? Why don't we start with you, Vince? I'm Vince Zampella. I'm the head of Respawn Entertainment. I'm Stig Asmussen, I'm game director on Jedi Fallen Order, and I just want to say I'm so proud to be up here on the stage for my, my whole team at Respawn. Uh, I'm Aaron Contreras, I'm the narrative lead at the Respawn team on Jedi. Hi, I'm Kasumi Shishido, I'm a producer at Respawn. And I am Steve Blank, Director of Franchise Content and Strategy in the Lucasfilm Story Group. Hey, <laughs> Steve! <laughs> and the biggest title of the day. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's the longest mouthful. title of the day. <laughs> and the Lucasfilm representative will welcome everybody. Vince, why don't we go ahead and start with you. All why right. don't you tell us a little bit about your history, about Respawn Entertainment, and how it feels to be bringing Star Wars to your already impressive game resume. So a small question we'll start with there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've had the honor of uh, like working on creating some of the biggest IPs in gaming, right? Like with Medal of Honor, Call of Duty, Titanfall, Apex Legends. <laughs> maybe play you played. <laughs> um, so to be able to add Star Wars, one of the biggest IPs in the world across any medium, is just you know a childhood fantasy for me, right? Like I, I grew up Star Wars as part of my DNA. It you know helped form who I am. So, you know, when Stig and I started working together, it was one of the things we talked about, like, we want to do this game, and to finally realize First it. First thing we talked about. Yeah. So, well, it's, it's, it's wonderful. So, and a story game. This is a Jedi <laughs> fantasy story. <laughs> I, I think we're known for being, you know, multiplayer shooter guys. Not just, that's not just who we are. This is a story game, no multiplayer, no microtransactions. It's about being a Jedi. <laughs> so that's why, you know, you bring experts like Stig on who, you know, again, Stig, I've known for a long time. I tried to get him to work with me. He, God of War 3, one of my favorite games of all time. He finally said yes, and I was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, it, just to go off script here a little bit, it, you know, one of the reasons I'm hosting this panel is, is that I actually got to work with Stig at my time during PlayStation. And I can tell you, you know, with very direct first-hand experience, what an incredible leader he is. And when we started talking about this panel and I found out, Stig, that you were directing this game and leading such a talented team, hmm. I was just very, very, very excited to have you on, on board. I just can't wait to hear more about this. There's no one better equipped to make a Jedi okay, game all than right, Stig. All right, all right. Oh, you want me to stop? <laughs> all right. So humble. <laughs> um, yeah, coming to Respawn was a, like, it's been such a wild ride. I came out here in, in what, 2014? Even before yeah. that, we were talking about yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. And uh, I got this, you know, opportunity to build 
a team with, with several members that were already at Respawn on the Titanfall team um, to build up a team from scratch. And that's something you don't really get to do very much in this industry, especially on AAA. Um, and since we were an indie studio and Titanfall was such a big success, we had the ability to kind of build slow and steady, and that's something that you never get to do in games. So along the way, we picked up uh, great veterans in the industry, people that worked on games like Uncharted, of course, God of War, Batman, Bioshock, Metal Gear, um, and of course, uh, Titanfall and Call of Duty. To say we're a mashup crew is, is, is an understatement, but everybody has a really high pedigree, and you know, when I come into work every day and I feel the vibe and I feel the energy in the studio and I actually get my hands on the controller and I see that we're making something that's really, really fun, um, it makes me feel great. It makes me know that we're on the right track and I can tell you I'm super confident that we're onto something. That's great. And you mentioned, of course, that it is a story-driven game. I want to take it over to Steve from Story Group at Lucasfilm. Tell us about the process of breaking a new story like this for a story game. Sure. I mean, the, the process in general of, of crafting any narrative, regardless of Star Wars or not, is a, a labor of love. It takes time, uh, a lot of effort, a lot of people having all sorts of conversations from across Lucasfilm, Respawn, EA, Disney, everywhere. Uh, to craft something together when it comes to this specific story. And it, it's a labor of love, like I said, and we can't wait for people to learn more about what this is. And, you know, everybody pitches in here. We all kind of get together and get to this point of making something incredible. And it all starts, you know, when Stig and team first came to our offices in San Francisco, they pitched us right away on wanting to tell a Jedi story. They wanted to put a lightsaber in the player's hand, give them force powers, and give them that opportunity. And we were immediately sold on <laughs> that, that premise. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Always easy. But no, you know, it's that premise, that simple idea is a, is a place to start. But that process then of finding the specific story and the, the individual narrative for this game, that takes a lot longer. And that takes a lot more collaboration, a lot more rounds of iteration. Yeah, it's been a challenging, uh, challenging collaboration. Iteration is so important in game development. You want to execute on ideas rapidly and then, you know, uh, play the game to figure out what works and what doesn't. Uh, and the process of working on a, a, a licensed IP with an external partner like Lucasfilm can often push a team towards getting stuck in documentation or, you know, create a culture of design by committee. Yeah, we had to use different approach when um, creating existing things in the Star Wars universe and new contents. We are introducing a lot of new planets and new characters. Um, so nailing down existing locations, for example, was something really important for both teams. So we did that by going back and forth on style guides or concept art. And even up to today, we do level playthroughs together over and over just to nail this. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, as we've kind of all been alluding to, getting everybody aligned and getting everyone sort of centered and focused on executing a specific story, it's a lot, a lot of hard work. But everybody is driving towards the same goal, which is making a badass, kick-ass Jedi Star Wars game for people to love. It sounds really good when you yeah. say it out loud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the hope. <laughs> yeah, we come a long way. Well, <laughs> so... Well, let's get into it. I mean, it's killing the anticipation's killing me over here. So, I mean, here's what we know about the game so far. We know that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order takes place after Order 66, right? Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. And you're a Padawan who survives those events. And that's really all that we know. What else can you tell us about the story or the gameplay? Anything today? Well, high level, <coughs> uh, it's a action, uh, action melee game. So you play as a Jedi on the run in training uh, with a lightsaber and force powers. Now we know the Star Wars audience is huge. We want to be able to ple please all Star Wars gamers. So we made sure that the combat is something that's easy to pick up. Um, but also if you put the time in, it, you can master it. It has a lot of depth. Um, so for us, it's important that we strike that right balance. Uh, this is Star Wars. Um, but what I will say is combat is key for us. Uh, internally, we call the combat in the game thoughtful combat. And what that means is you really have to size up your enemies, uh, identify and exploit their weaknesses with all the powers that you have. Um, but, you know, I could keep on talking about it, 
but we actually have a trailer today that we can show. <laughs> <laughs> I told you they'd like that. Oh, you're not waiting till the end of your panel to show a trailer. Wow, that <laughs> 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 Already? Let's, I don't think anyone's going to argue with that. I want to see a trailer. Wait a minute. Can I qualify? Yeah, please. Set it up for us. First of all, a huge shout out to everybody at Respawn and EAD Woo! for all the hard work that was put into this. We're super, super proud to be showing this to the world. Um, one thing that's uh, important that everybody knows is this is celebration, and I think people want to know a lot about the story. So we decided to focus on a story-based trailer, so this is not raw gameplay but it is all gameplay assets that you will find in the game, uh, and it is all rendered in-engine. Last but not least, we will be introducing a new hero to the galaxy, uh, and he will be introduced in this, tr in this trailer, and his name is Cal. Yeah. You want to see it? Yeah! Here is the world premiere of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Let's take a look. Wasn't always like this. But now, there are three rules to survive. Don't stand out. Accept the past. Trust. so many questions. I, why, between this and episode nine, why is 2019 so amazing? That was incredible. There's yeah, so I have much. To say, I've seen that trailer multiple times before today, but watching it up there in front of everyone, it's emotion. It's unbelievable. Wow. Uh, really incredible. So uh, let's just let's just dive right in. Help us out with the story here. How, uh, tell us about the story, Aaron. Why don't we start with you? Yeah, I am so ready to talk about the story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so as many of you here today probably know, for a thousand generations, the Jedi were guardians of peace and justice in the Old Republic before the dark times, before the Empire. And our story set during those dark times. The Empire is at the height of its power. The Jedi are reviled as traitors. Inquisitors roam the galaxy hunting for any surviving Jedi or any other Force sensitive. You're going to play as Cal Kestis, as Stig said, a young Force user who's hiding in plain sight as the game opens. Cal becomes a target of the Imperial Inquisition and must master the ways of the Force if he wants to survive. Wow, that sounds great. Tell us more about Cal. Uh, now, what's it been like to develop this brand new character, this hero Jedi? So credit for creating Cal has to go to Stig and uh, one of our writing team, Matt Mcnivitz. 
Matt Mignovitz. Oh, the he's Mac Mignovitz, a writer from the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. Yeah, yeah that's, yep. that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. The Emmy wow. award-winning Clone Wars series, which he never lets me forget that they got an Emmy. <laughs> right. Uh, so Matt's a, a part of a writing team, which is like a really like smart, talented group of people who make my life very interesting all the time. Uh, anyway, so as you saw in the trailer, uh, Cal's living in hiding. It's on a planet called Bracca, which is in the mid rim. He's part of the Scrapper Guild, and he works tearing apart derelict starships, mostly decommissioned capital ships from the Clone Wars. It's really hard, dangerous work. The dark times have shaped Cal. He keeps his head down, pulling himself back from getting involved in the world around him. He can't trust anyone with the secrets he carries for fear that it will endanger them. But eventually, Cal does get involved, and it puts the ignition on his trail. He'll have to face the trauma of his past and learn to trust in new allies and the Force. If the Order is to ever rise again, Cal must persist through failure and adapt to a new understanding of what it means to be a Jedi, a guardian of peace and justice, after the bad guys have won and all hope has been lost. I want to play this game right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. And I have to say, you know, looking at that trailer and looking at that face, um, I ran into someone backstage who looks and sounds a lot like Cal <laughs> and might know a thing or two about this character as well because I'm pretty sure it's the actor that plays Cal. You want to meet him? Yeah. All right. Well, you may know him from Gotham. Yeah. You may know him from Shameless. Yeah. But soon you'll know him as Jedi Cal Kestis. Pre please welcome Cameron Monaghan to the stage. Cameron. Going on, Steve. Hi, Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. This is straight up one of my favorite cities in the world. This place has a lot of personal significance for me, so I can't believe I get to show the trailer here of all places. This is amazing. Give it up for Chicago. Yeah. Just the city itself. Thank you. Like, give it up for yourself. Chicago, Star Wars, and Respawn. I think we're all on cloud nine here. This is great. Yeah. How does it feel to be the next Jedi? Oh, it's no big deal. It's only every kid's freaking dream ever to be a Jedi. It's, I mean, it's incredible. If I told my 10-year-old self who had the VHS box set of the original uh, trilogy, and he watched, like, certain scenes over and over to the point that they were, like, fuzzy and worn out, the Darth Vader return of the Jedi scenes, of course. Um, <laughs> if I told that kid that he was going to get to swing a lightsaber one day, I'd think that his brain just would have exploded and leaked out of his ears. It's still kind of leaking out of my ears a little bit right now, I'll be honest. It's really <laughs> surreal. It's amazing. That's awesome. Well, Stig, what was it about Cameron that drew you to his performance or his audition for the role of Cal? Actually, that would be Aaron. <laughs> uh, we were doing our first few rounds of casting, and uh, we ended up, uh, I ended up missing one of the casting audition sessions, and it Turns out that was the one that uh, Cam was in. And uh, I was instructed by our casting director to go up on the network because we had recorded all the sessions and, and catch up. And we had two folders on the network. One was review first, and one was other. Somehow Cam ended up in the other folder. What? <laughs> Sorry. But, somehow. Uh, somehow. Somehow. <laughs> um, and I looked at the review first. There was nothing there that was striking a chord, and we decided to continue the search. But Aaron's super thorough, and uh, he combed through the other folder and brought Cam to my attention. I'm like, this is the guy that we've been talking about. This is the guy that we've been writing about for you know the last several years, really. And he brings this quality. We always talked about we wanted somebody with the kind of this young Clint Eastwood quality. And that's exactly what Cam brings, and that's why you're perfect, perfect Cal. Thank you. That's, that's really, really amazing. You, uh, Aaron, Stig, you are now in the review first folder in my heart forever. <laughs> 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 Thank you. That's great. No, I mean, awesome. Cam, as, as Stig was saying, just embodies what we always envisioned in Cal, is this kind of, this Jedi who has this sort of quiet optimism who can 
exist through the dark times and take back on the mantle of being a hero, and he's got this power to him, and just watching him in, in the PCAP sessions step into and really create and bring to life the character of Cal has been incredible. And Cameron, what is it about Cal Kestis that, that drew you to that part? Uh, but tell us a little bit about that character. Well, he immediately jumped off the page. Uh, he felt really distinct with what you guys had already built and created, but he was... Um, he has this sort of grit to him. He's uh, street smart and wary, and uh, he's been through a lot. But at the same time, there's this sort of optimism to him. He's ultimately a very good-hearted person, even though he's experienced much of tragedy. And uh, yeah, that was something that immediately spoke to me, was the story felt very human and very relatable, and it was something that I wanted to relate to and, and tell as well. I'm curious about the process of developing this character. To go back even further, Kasumi, what was the process like developing Cal? Was it a long process, iteration? Um, yeah, it was a really fun? long <laughs> process. Um, we spent a lot of time and effort into creating Cal and bringing him to life. Um, just within the concept phase, we probably spent about a year. Um, and we knew who Cal was from a story perspective, but we really wanted to emphasize that in his visual design and outfit and every little detail of him. So I want to give a shout out to some of our teammates, art team back at Respawn, Jordan Lamarwan, Chris Hutton, um, Hanno Hagedorn, and Lars Martinson. These guys were the core members that brought Cal to life. Um, they spent hundreds of iteration from concept phase all the way to the final model, which you guys just saw um, in the final trailer. That's amazing. Cool. So this is your first video game, is that right? Yep. Now, you walk into a video game, and it's not just voiceover. You're also doing, of course, likeness capture, mm -hmm. motion capture. Oh, here, got some, some footage of you, actually, some behind-the-scenes footage. <laughs> Was it everything that you expected? Was it more? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that I kind of came in with the perception of uh, motion capture, which I think a lot of people do when, when you tell them a performance capture of like, oh, you're just going to do a voiceover and then show up and walk around with the, in the suit with some balls on it or whatever, and that's, yeah. And then it turns out it's actually much, much, much more in-depth, and uh, you're able to really pick up... Um, uh, very subtle uh, changes in, in emotion and in movement and body and, and create a performance that's really nuanced and, um, and detailed, you know, if, if, if the performance is there. Um, so being able to explore and only really be limited by imagination when you're in a digital space meant that we were kind of these kids playing in our big sandbox and uh, it, we got to uh, do something that I think that we're all really proud of. Yeah. I see too, and I, I watch this action footage here of you <laughs> wielding a lightsaber. That's so cool. But it reminds me, uh, Vince, of something you said. It, just the f sort of fluidity of your motion here reminds me of your gameplay comment about the importance of feel in, in respawn games. Uh, after all, that's, that's, how, that's what we're doing, we're playing. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the pillars of what we do at respawn, right? It's, uh, the game has to feel good. We're making interactive entertainment. so. The, the feel, the touch, the, the, the way things interact in the game is just so important. And, you know, like Stig and I are synced up on that. And, uh, you know, if you've played his games, you, you know that. Um, so it was just a natural fit to, to bring that feel from the first person into the third person now, where it's even more important because that, that thoughtful combat, that melee, that has to connect and feel right and look good. And it, it, it's just something that was really important. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge gamer and a, a huge fan of what Respawn have done and uh, it's Stig as, you know, as well. Um, and I, I obviously wasn't involved in the creation of the gameplay at all, so I was coming very objectively and I really wanted to see satisfying, weighty, visceral combat that had impact. And I, I gotta say, like, it kicks ass. <laughs> I don't, it's Disney, I don't know if we're allowed to say that, but yeah, seriously, no. it kicks ass. It's and so cool. And getting to use force powers in there too, yeah. along with the melee, and like that, that feel is all there. Yeah, but I mean, for me, like, I just always wanted to know what it felt like to like swing a lightsaber and for it to be satisfying, and it is really satisfying. Yeah, we only get to work on it. He's a new freaking Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually great to hear about the gameplay. I, I do have to say, though, I'm still thinking about that trailer. I still have all of these burning questions, and I, don't, I know we don't want to give away too much about the story, but we've got to go back to some story moments and that trailer. 
Uh, you know, I know I'm not the only fan of Star Wars Rebels in this room, uh, right? But I just have to ask, there was a character, yeah, who's that? <laughs> who's that's, that? Uh, that's that's Ste this yeah. lovely character. Uh, so that is the second sister Inquisitor. So uh, a, new, a new Inquisitor that we have designed and developed and are introducing in this game. And for those with, with eagle eyes, we have actually teed up this character in an image of Darth Vader number 19, if you go back and take a look written by Charles Sewell. We have put her already out in the world, but it's from the design oh. and from these guys as we were planting those seeds for what will ultimately pay off in this game. How and she's, awesome is that? You know, she's a member of the Inquisitorius out there hunting down Jedi after Order 66. That's... <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, we'll be, uh, we'll be saying more about the second, si second sister at a later date, but uh, I will say that she's exceptionally intelligent. And if you watch the trailer, you'll see she's actually using the force to control the flight stick of the ship that Cal's on during that. So it's, uh, she's very clever. Super clever. I I'm not done, though. <laughs> I, I have so, more, so many more questions. There were more characters in there. There was this, this amazing droid character. Yeah, right here. <laughs> oh. Who, who's, this, who's this little droid right here? What can you tell us about this droid? That little guy is BD-1. Um, and internally at Respawn, that stands for Buddy Droid One. <laughs> um, and that's exactly what he is to Cal. They're, they're best friends. Um, I would not consider BD a sidekick at all. They're, they're, they're equals. And they go on this journey together and they really learn how to lean on one another. And like we've been saying, this is dark times. Um, so you need somebody to pro provide a little bit of light. And that's exactly what BD does. He actually, one of his functions is a spotlight. And that's just one of many useful tools that BD has that you'll be able to find and upgrade over the course of the game. Now, the other really cool thing about him is his voice is totally legit. Uh, we seeked out the talents of Ben Burt, who's... Oh! I know. Ben Burt, the cr original creator of the entire sound Star Wars soundscape. Yeah. R2-D2, yeah. Chewbacca, TIE Fighters, Lightsabers, Darth Vader, that Ben Burt? Yeah, I think there was a couple people on, on the team who were kind of around the same time arrived on this great idea, and Ben was totally up for the challenge, and, uh, you know, he's, the vocalization of BD is, you know, it's whimsical, yet it's also endearing, and it totally screams Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, it maybe literally screams Star Wars at times, too. We'll have to find <laughs> out. That's great. Well, what, what can you tell us about the inspiration behind this droid, BD-1? There wasn't a single inspiration. BD-1 is like the darling of the development team, so everybody brought their own like background and diverse perspective to the character, and I think BD-1's so good because of that. Um, but in terms of execution, I want to give a shout-out to Adnan Chachawala and Laura Teef in design and animation, who have really done an amazing job of bringing BD-1 to life, which you'll see when you play the game. You know? Yeah, when we were creating BD-1, we looked at droids like BB-8, R2-D2, even Chopper. Um, we really put a lot of research into these droids to understand what makes these droids so iconic and lovable to the franchise. So we worked really closely with Doug Chang and Hez Chorba from Lucasfilm um, to create the visual design of this droid. And it was a really fun process. We started off with something that looks familiar to us, like everyday appliances, like a vacuum cleaner or a Roomba, or um, you know, we had a, even a version that looked like a tiny ATST with a camcorder head. Um, so we explored a lot of options, but this is where we ultimately landed, and we're really happy with the results. There was another inspiration, though, too, wasn't there, Aaron? Yes, uh, my dog, Mary the Boston Terrier. <laughs> now, the biography for BD-1 was at the forefront of my mind, and, and just so you guys know, she's a very good dog. <laughs> <laughs> and BD is a very good droid. You know, he's, he's like um, Cal's closest companion throughout the story. It's a little bit of like a boy and his dog situation, and uh, they become very close, and, and BD provides a lot of the light of the story, and not to undersell his usefulness at all, I, I, but uh, some of my favorite scenes are the interactions just between BD and Cal. Yeah. And the smoothness with which they interact is just great within the game. Like, they, the team has really nailed it. Mm -hmm. And Cameron, in that behind-the-scenes footage, I saw you with a lot of other talented actors as well. Mm. Uh, can you tell us about uh, some more of the cast that we saw in the trailer? You had a friend there that was helping you. 
as well. Yeah, we yeah, have, here. Uh, yeah, that's uh, Seer, played by Deborah Wilson, who is a former Jedi Knight and kind of takes on the role of mentor to Cal in many ways. But it's not the traditional um, uh, Padawan uh, master sort of relationship. Instead, there's this uh, group that kind of band together to form a sort of uh, un. Uh, Kind of a, a strange family. This 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 weird little the team that co go band together to explore the galaxy, and uh, I think that that's ultimately uh, the real heart and core of of the stories. A lot of them. So you've met a couple of the characters in the trailer briefly, but uh, there's a bunch more that you haven't seen yet, who I think are also really incredible. Mm -hmm. Which reminds me, I still have questions. <laughs> uh, I want to go back to the dark side because there were these incredible. Uh, I guess they were melee, yes, melee troopers here. <laughs> Tell us about these troopers. They looked so sure. good in that trailer. Yeah, sure. So these are uh, new troopers we are introducing called Purge Troopers. Uh, and creating new troopers in Star Wars is always a, a fun experiment and finding the utility that you're looking for in the troopers. We've seen multiple variations over years of films and TV shows. We have shore troopers and death troopers and snow troopers and flame troopers and, and onwards. And we wanted to, you know, develop something for this game. Yeah, there's always a lot of rumors floating around in the galaxy of Jedi fightings, especially this time. Um, and it's actually the Inquisitor's job to hunt them down, but like Steve was mentioning, there's so few of them, so they actually send these purge troopers to investigate. And when they do encounter a Jedi, they call the uh, Inquisitors back in. But these troopers are also specially trained to fight Jedis, so when they do encounter one, they're really eager to fight them. Yeah, so and even Jedis have leaks. <laughs> <laughs> I just, um, I, yeah. Yeah, no, but I mean, these, these troopers in particular um, actually have a great story of collaboration behind them because as we were developing the story for this game and we came up with this need of, you know, the support for the Inquisitors, we were also simultaneously with Charles Sewell at Marvel developing his Darth Vader series, which would focus around the Inquisitors, and he came up with a very similar need. So we sort of approached those problems together. We sat down with the respawn team, we talked to Marvel. Um, and, you know, Respawn took the lead on designing these troopers, and then we shared that design once we finalized it. They actually brought it up earlier in the pipeline to complete it against Marvel's timelines. Um, we shared it with Marvel, and so you've actually already seen these troopers in the background on a uh, cover issue in the Marvel comic series. I so see. we've seen them on the page. We're going to see them in HD uh, in this game, but also I think it'd be kind of cool to see them in person, maybe? Well, Would sure. people want to see them, like, see Purge Troopers? Now? I think now. You want to meet some Purge Troopers? You want troopers? to meet some Purge yeah. Troopers? That's kind of cool. Oh. Let's bring them out. Yeah. Bring I don't know out. if Careful Cam does. <laughs> no. Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah, get a selfie. Do it, do it, do it. Selfie is not a bad idea. Careful. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get the crowd in the background. <laughs> we good? All right. <laughs> Say cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very patient purge trooper. That is a very patient purge trooper. They're trained for such things. They don't apparently. know you're a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I mean, first of all, I always loved it that, it, you know, I loved the idea of the Jedi purge in general in, in Star Wars. And then you I love loved it? what Rebels yeah. added to that with, the, the Inquisitors, and yep. it makes uh, so much sense, you know, that what you said about, oh, there'd be all these rumors about Jedi all over the galaxy, so the Purge Troopers come in. Uh, what a great, that's just a, such a great addition to story and, and gameplay, but it makes me wonder what kind of challenges uh, these Purge Troopers are going to present to the player and to our Jedi hero, Cal. That's a good question. Um, they're basically kind of born out of the Stormtrooper, uh, mechanically. Uh, the, f the Stormtrooper was the first AI we got stood up in the game that could actually, we could fight against it. And one hit with a lightsaber, they go down. Um, so they didn't provide much of a challenge unless we put them in situations where there's like dozens of them, which is okay. We might have scenarios like that in our game, but like I said, thoughtful combat, it's not a button matcher. So we needed to find something that was more of a meaty one-on-one -on -one fight. So that's how we came up with these specially, uh, specially trained commando units with Lucasfilm. And yeah, it's kind of been said, but they come into battle as kind of, they're airdropped in as the first responders. 
and they soften up the Jedi before the Inquisitorius rolls in. <laughs> I love that. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, now, I did have one last thing that I still wanted to ask about the trailer, because, it, and it's actually, it's been in some of the art that you released leading up to Celebration, which is about Cal's lightsaber. Mm -hmm. How do you know that's Cal's lightsaber? <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh. Well then, okay, all right. Well then, what can you tell us about? Yeah, you're right. It does look very storied. Uh, it looks like it's been through some things. What can you tell us about this? So the lightsaber, I don't think we're going to be talking about that until we release the game. <laughs> it's, it's, you guys wouldn't want us to. It's, it's so intimately tied to the story. It's just full of spoilers. What I will say is that over the course of the game, it will grow and evolve. Um, and in many respects, is, is kind of a reflection of Cal. The lightsaber will change and evolve. You heard what I said. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> shut down. <laughs> That's great. Oh, my gosh. I, so I, I have one. Of, I, I lied. I have one more question, which is this. I just want to know, and I'm sure everyone here wants to know, too, when. Hmm. Right? <laughs> when do we get to experience this story and play this game? When is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order coming into our lives and our homes to play? Vince? <laughs> hmm, let me think about it. November 15th, 2019. Oh! This year, November 15th, 2019. Xbox, PlayStation, PC, full simultaneous launch. Xbox, this PlayStation. This holiday. This holiday. Xbox, PC, PlayStation 4, November 15th, 2019. Why is 2019 so amazing? That's so great. <laughs> Oh, just seven months away. Well, that's great. Um, I've got so many. I took so many notes because I had so many questions here. But uh, I just want to ask you all um, if you have any final thoughts before we, we wrap this up. Why don't we start with you, Steve? Uh, sure. I mean, this just being able to sit on this panel today, it's an incredible privilege to be able to share this information, this content we've been working on for a long time together with everyone here. I will not lie. I started getting choked up seeing everybody's reaction to the trailer. It's pretty incredible. Um, and it's, like we were saying earlier, it is an absolute labor of love. Our teams, you know, have come together and created something and spent a lot of time figuring out what this was going to be. And as, you know, they've shouted out the Respawn team, us too at Lucasfilm, a huge shout out to our games production team with Orion and Matt and Marco, Hez as well, who Kasumi mentioned earlier, and on our, you know, my fellow story group members with James and Kelsey, Emily, Matt, Leland. Um, it's just a whole ton of people who put their time and effort into this, and we cannot wait for people to continue to learn more and get their hands on it on November 15th. That's Thank great. you. <laughs> Kasumi, Aaron, any thoughts? Um, yeah, what Steve said, but what we talked about and looked at today is really only the fraction of our game. There's so much more. Um, and myself, everybody on this panel, and everybody back at Respawn in Los Angeles, Woo! we're putting our heart and soul into this game. They so really we, we really can't wait to show you more. Yeah, we're, very, we're working very hard trying to hit that date for everybody, but it's days like this when we get to realize we're making a Star War, and it's like a really good feeling uh, and a lifelong dream for me and a whole lot of people on the team. It's just been a total privilege working at Respawn uh, in a culture of trust and ownership, and that starts with leaders like Vincent Stig. So that's been a fantastic experience for me. But also, games are made by teams, and everything you saw here today was made by the team back at Respawn. Uh, they're fantastic people, and we're, we're trying to make something really special for all of you. Yeah. That's great. Stig, any? Yeah, again, uh, shout out to the team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming up last on this, but... Uh, <laughs> Everybody's poured their heart and soul into it. Um, and here we are, guys. I feel like I can hear Joe screaming from Los Angeles. right <laughs> now, so. He's still screaming. But uh, my message directly to the team is, is uh, here we are. This is real. Um, and it doesn't get any bigger than this. And. Uh, this is a very special opportunity that we have, and I'm confident that we're all going to do it together and have a great game on November 15th. I love it. I, I, one of the things that I just, sorry to just go off script here, is I, again, hearing the shout-outs to the team, it's just such a, 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 a sign of such an awesome team 
and just kind of reiterates my feelings about you as a leader, Stig. Thank you for setting that culture. It's just amazing. Hi to everyone that's working on this game, watching at home. Uh, thanks for your great work. Thanks for making 2019 so awesome. And thanks to everyone at Lucasfilm, too, for making 2019 such a great time to be a Star Wars fan. Vince, Cameron, any final thoughts? Um, I think that we're all, this team, everyone involved, <laughs> uh, is, a, um, is a huge fan of Star Wars, and we wanted to make sure that we you know, honored and respected the story. Um, you're just kind of scratching the surface with what you're seeing here. Uh, but ultimately, for me, Star Wars is about finding uh, hope and connection and light within the darkness. And th it is a somewhat dark story. It takes place in a dark time. But that being said, uh, there's a lot of joy and adventure, and it's, it's really beautiful what these guys have done and created. I think that they're being a little bit humble, but they should be very proud of the work that they've done. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, we're huge fans of Star Wars, so we're honored to be able to bring this to you guys. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, as you've heard, it, it takes a village to raise a Jedi. <laughs> so, I mean, it, this is a team sport. There's so much work that's gone into it, so, many, so much passion out of people. Uh, I know, you know, like you said, everyone on the team is such a huge fan of Star Wars, such a part of who we are. I'm honored to be able to represent, you know, a, a part of that team today. And, yeah, there's a lot more to the game that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Well, we might, <laughs> we might, but there's something first that uh, uh, that we want to do. We might show the trailer again, but who likes giveaways? <laughs> 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 well, unbeknownst to you, before you all entered this arena, we randomly selected two seats uh, before everyone came in, and two of you unknowingly sat in those seats. And what you are going to get is a really, really cool prize from our partners at Xbox. They're here giving away two of these awesome prize packs. An Xbox One X, of course, amazing. Not to mention a one-month membership to Xbox Live Gold, this cool Jedi Fallen Order backpack, water bottle. What a cool package. So right now, uh, Steven and Michelle from Microsoft, where are they? They're out there, the cameras are following them. They're going to go to one of those two lucky seats right now, and pretty soon someone's going to find out that they're going home with an Xbox One <laughs> X right there. Congratulations. <laughs> Trust me, nobody wants to go anywhere just yet. That's great, and we've got one more, is that right? One more? Where is it? Oh, where? He's already up. He's huh? selected. He's behind you, David. Oh, right there. Oh, there he is. It's already happened. There's the other winner right there. Xbox One X. Congratulations. Fantastic. Now, each of you got it. were handed a ticket as you were watching the panel. Yes? No? Oh. No? How are we doing this? Well, let me tell you right now, though. Before we get to distribution, and it's not going to be handed out right here in the arena, each of you is going home with something really, really cool. Now, we saw some characters in the trailer, but you're also going to be able to get this really cool collector pin set here. But that's... <laughs> but that's not all. That's not all. You're also going to get, everyone who attended, one month li of Xbox... Live gold for free. I already took the promotional code, so don't try it. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Everyone is going to get this limited edition poster of this magnificent art right here. Fantastic, fantastic. So that's really, really great. Uh, I think we're, I'll find out how we're doing this during the break, but while I'm finding out how you're going to get this, because there are distribution centers that are not here in the arena, we're going to give you instructions in just a moment on how to pick it all up. But right now, you want to see that trailer one more time? Yeah. You want to see it one more time? Woo. Let's roll it, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Wasn't always like this. But now, there are three rules to survive. Don't 
don't stand out. Except the past. Trust. <laughs> Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, November 15, 2019. Of course. Thank you so much.